everybody! Welcome back to Alien RPG. This is my campaign, Aliens vs. Predator vs. Engineers. Uh, this is the beginning of Scenario 6. Our PCs will be doing a... They'll be finding out a lot of information and then starting to make a decision from there. Uh, it's about two and a half hours long. We're glad to be back with Alien. Uh, our next one will be two weeks from today. Uh, so please like and subscribe for more. Uh, you can find this campaign and all my Alien RPG content on uh, my webpage, with, which the uh, link will be in the description. Thanks a lot so much, and we will, uh, well, let's get to it. Where we left off, uh, you guys um, had landed on Grendel in ICSC space and uh, Blake brought you guys to um, uh, SSI headquarters which every time I go to say SSI now I want to say OSS which is completely different but that's because I'm writing a novel that takes place during World War II right now <laughs> that's good and uh, uh, you guys uh, checked in there and you met Mr. Paul Verhoeven, uh, who uh, revealed to you that his name is actually Alan Schaefer, and he told you a lot of things that you guys aren't sure whether or not you wanted to believe him, which is fair because it all seemed rather, all seemed rather uh, uh, far-fetched to be sure. Um, but in the end, uh, using a sample of Yaucha blood, uh, they were able to treat uh, Andy's character, uh, Dr. Mitchell Roman, uh, had, far from cured, but at least he's feeling well and should be for a while. Can I point uh, something out real quick? Sorry please. To interrupt you. No. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger has a presence in both our campaigns, although it hasn't been necessarily revealed <laughs> in the Conan game, I imagine Conan will look like Arnold. And Verhoeven looks like Arnold in this game. You know, it might just be because the I 80s we're were... A, fanboys. Yeah, well, that okay. too. And, wrong with that. and the 80s were a magical time, and can you think of a better face of the 80s than Arnold? No, of course not. Uh, hmm. Ronald Reagan, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it, at least from at least from '80s entertainment media is concerned, you know. Um, and, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I I've got a love of the guy. Um, you know, it, it uh, I, just to me, there's no one that has accomplished the American dream probably better than he did. If you if you really read his uh, history, he's he's really an amazing guy. He is actually a very nice person. My grandmother-in-law, my wife's grandmother, met him at medieval times in uh, California. Oh no shit! She was living out of uh, my uncle-in-law's trailer. He's the general manager, and he had like a uh, a big uh, what do you call those things? Uh, not a tra you know a mobile home, but a, but a big one, you know. Uh. The, that you drive around that he would all those uh, big go, airstream things yeah he would go back and forth between his home in vegas and the castle in la and arnold came to the show and my grandmother-in-law's from austria and oh. he met her germany. or she's from germany he's from austria but they both speak german sure and he was so sweet to her out of for no reason just extra sweet they spoke in german he, you know, hugged her and was really nice. And then, like a couple of days later, the signed eight by ten showed up for her. You know what I mean? Like, just went out of his way, like a, like a real gentleman. And I always thought, you know, that says so much about a person. Oh when no he has doubt. Absolutely nothing to gain by being kind. And just does it to be nice. Like, all right, he's a good guy. You know. <laughs> I'm really glad to hear that because you. You never know. Sometimes you hear these stories about these people that you like, and they're total douchebags. Yeah, I've got a uh, I've got a guy that I uh, a buddy that sold cars for me a few years back, um, and he's out of the car business now. He's doing um, he does he's got a home inspection business now. But um, back in the eighties, he um, was a cop in L.A. and 
there um and he was on a what's that martin reeks <laughs> no unfortunately <laughs> um uh but eric was uh he was on a he was on a duty where he was uh to check on a handful of houses uh several times a day because the uh the the people who lived there were known to be out of town you know back when people did that they called their local police department and said i'm gonna be out of town for a week if you don't mind just swinging by once in a while so um he had a schedule of when people were supposed to be gone and he came by this place and he saw um and he was just doing his his checking the place out and on the back porch these people were eating breakfast it was early in the morning and they weren't supposed to be back um so he just he waved and they they uh they let him into the into the backyard and it was arnold schwarzenegger and maria shriver they had just gotten back from getting married right after the wrap-up of filming predator um and they they invited him in and he got to sit there and eat lunch with arnold and maria <laughs> shriver or eat breakfast rather um which is pretty pretty freaking incredible in my yeah, that's pretty crazy so but you said he's they nice were there like that man he's like very he hasn't forgotten where he's come from it seems like. no no he said they were the nicest two people he'd ever met too cool. so all right um on to it um uh let's see so uh, a little bit of time had passed because Rudy got uh, a new arm. It's not uh, a custom job at this point, but it's functional. And you guys were tr getting, um, you guys were getting uh, uh, Dr. Roman treated um, and re resupplying and and getting uh, getting equipment back that you had lost and that type of thing. Um, you had uh, you had come to meet with rose uh one morning and while you were speaking with her uh verhoven showed back up and uh the the short of it was he was playing uh he was playing golf with uh some people and he he found out that the icsc the independent core systems colonies had declared war on the ua which was um I guess uh, shocking might be the right word um, because the ICSC doesn't really have a cohesive military. They're more just a collection of, uh, of independent colonies. And, um, and that fell in line with something that Rose knew that, or Rose found out that a vessel called USS Cronola a U.S. CMC Cronola? ship, yeah, Cronola, <laughs> C-R-O-N-U-L-L-A, uh, is on its way to Grendel. Um, so uh, at that point, Rose looked at you guys and said, well, you know, we we have all this information that we need to research. We've got, uh, we've got you know, the hard drives that you guys saved from GBH-45. Uh, you have... Um, uh, she wants to she wants to do some looking into this USCMC ship that was coming um, that's coming to the coming to Grendel. Uh, there's so she asked for you guys to give her some help doing the um, doing the research as it were. So and uh, Verhoeven said, well, based on the fact that. Cronola is supposed to be here in, um, let's see, what it, what was the time frame? I apologize. Granola, Cronola, no, I'm mean, going me saying Granola. The Cronola <laughs> is supposed to, it. yeah, thanks a lot, is supposed to be here in about six days. So he basically wanted, um, he wants her to have the research figured out quickly. At 8 a.m. tomorrow, you guys are going to meet again and determine a course of action. So, and that's when Rose looked at you and said, who wants to give me a hand? Well, the obvious ones are the docs, right? Yeah, I, I think so. I'm, I'm of no use doing research. No, uh, maybe you want, not. You the... want something repaired or you want something blown up? <laughs> guy, but... Um. 
So we'll uh, we'll start there. Um, uh, Jake, Rose looks at you and says, "Well, what? Um, where do you want to start? We have the hard drives from GBH forty five. Um, we've also got uh, we've also got this uh, ship, the Cronola, to look into. I want some more information about that? So, where would you like to start? I would prefer the hard drives. She says, "All right." Um, Where's the ship coming from? Well, that's what you guys don't really know. Uh, they just know they're due, but we don't know where they're coming. It's a military vessel that this system is at war with. Right? Correct. It's a so you, you know it's a USCMC ship, so... They're coming here to kick ass, or what are they coming here for? I need to hide. <laughs> I'm going to have Rose... Um, I'm going to have Rose... I'm, I'll come back to you in just a second, Jake. I'm going to have Rose make a ComTech roll. Um... Just since I've got her sheet handy, I'm just gonna make that roll really quick. Did it roll? It did. There it goes. Okay. All right. It it didn't do anything on my screen. I'm looking at the chat log and nothing was happening. Um. <clears throat> all right. So. So Can Jake, what's that? Can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. Can okay. you hear me now? Um, all right, so Jake, let's um, let's start with the hard drives. Let's um, let's start with a very simple, straightforward Comtech roll. Let's see what you come up with. One success. All right, perfect. Uh, so you've got, you've got there. This there's huge, huge amounts of data uh, here, and um, Rose probably uh, she only probably takes about an hour to do what she's doing before she announces. All right, I've got what I need from there, and uh, she comes over and looks over your shoulder, and. It looks like, it looks like the the mainframe, the mother system at GVH 45, it, it has incredible amounts of data about the uh, Cyberdyne project, which you guys already have a pretty good grasp on what that is. Um, but it, it has locked, um, it has locked and, and encoded folders all over uh, there are probably um, there are probably three or four that are um, that are uh, encrypted uh, I, that you would need to break into additionally it looks like there's a there's a huge amount of data um, it looks like every amount of sensor data and everything that ever occurred on GBH 45 since it was founded was fed into this mother system even though um, the colony itself is not necessarily a Wayland owned colony it's a it's a 3WE colony but they were they were clearly feeding everything into um, into mother and you guys have recordings of all that up to and including the moment the system went down so Rose is looking over your shoulder and says uh, there's a lot here what would you what do you want to tackle first I would say whatever looks more biological in regards to the alien species. All right, um, let's do this then. Uh, why don't we have you make an additional ComTech roll 
to see if you can break the, uh, see if you can decrypt the file folders. And you can gain a point of help from uh, Rose. She's there with you. Oh, okay, three successes. So there is um, there is a file folder for the genetic accelerant. There is it's uh, you know that big long string of characters which I don't feel like uh, digging out right now. Um, there is a file folder for uh, uh, that is called um, engineers. There is a file folder that is called XX121. There is a file folder called David. Um, there's a, uh, yeah, um, that's, that's what you're seeing. She, uh, Rose looks at you and says, David was, was that, there's a file folder called David. That was an, that was an old, um, that was an old Android model, an old Wayland Android. Is that the android that you encountered on your ship? Well, let's find out. I guess we look at that first because I'd really like to know who tried to kill us. All right. Uh, when you guys move into that folder, the screen just starts scrolling with uh, huge numbers of... Uh, of files, um, all with alphanumeric, um, all with alphanumeric uh, file names. And as you're looking at them, as you're looking at them. Oh, by the way, you had two two stunts. What would you like to do with those two stunts? Um, stunt, stunt, stunts. Cheat, cheat. Don't need to overcome this again. Okay. Uh, new and unexpected information. Okay. All right. So, perfect. So, uh, what you're seeing on on all of these, uh, what you're seeing with these files, and some of them seem to be degraded a bit to the point that they're not usable, but the alphanumeric file names, um, you're absolutely convinced are memory files of the androids and when i say memory files um i i mean i mean specific audio visual memories uh that you would be able and there's there's just there's 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 thousands and thousands and thousands they just keep going and going and going and as you're as you're paying attention to that you um you start to a when the screen finally stops scrolling uh it ends with 5,772 files to the tune of about six terabytes of data. Um, and where that really strikes home for you is with, and admittedly, you're not, you're not an Android technician by any means, but based on what you know about the way Androids work, um, this is almost a hundred years worth of memories. Which would put it in line with one of the uh, one of the uh, being one of the original David androids, perhaps. You know, they came into use somewhere in the late twenty first century. Right. It just happens to be one of the uh, original, so most buggy but Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have Rose do a Comtech roll. I'm going to, where's Rose? Where's Rose? There she is. Rose uh, looking at oh my god okay Rose looking at all the uh, all those files <laughs> she just she just kind of uh, she sighs that is a lot to go through there's got to be there's got to be a way we can cross reference 
uh, there's got to be a way we can cross cross reference some search terms or images maybe perhaps through all those memory files to get us because we don't have time to go through all this obviously but maybe if we can get a handful of hits um, she does say I do I'm gonna go over to this other terminal I want to take a look at the most recent data uh, she said it, it looked like that all of the data from the colony was being fed into mother as well I'd like to look at the most recent entries from the colony, see if I can get any more information, uh, perhaps about the uh, about the ship that took the colony out or something, see if their sensors caught anything before they went offline. So she moves off to go working on that. What would you like to do, Jake? Jake would like to um, go on to look at the it's one-to-ones. Okay, perfect. Um, so, uh, again, there there is a there's a large amount of data here. Um, there there are a, uh, there's a there's a whole report file on XX one two one that is um, about a hundred pages long, and it's it's. Uh, it seems to be everything Wayland Yutani knows about XX121. That it um, that it seems to have multiple ways of uh, of um, uh, it seems to have multiple. Uh, sorry, my brain just crapped out for a second. The most common way of of an X of uh, the most common form of an XX121 starts from the egg. Uh, uh, which releases a second organism that they um, euphemistically call a face hugger, which then implants uh, something that they euphemistically call a chest burster, which over the course of 24 hours quickly grows and molts and has uh, a hardened carapace and acid blood. These things are most uh, a concentrated molecular acid at that, and it has the acid blood in all forms. These things are most easily um, killed in the in the early stages. The uh, the uh, but once they once they grow and molt a bit and their their carapace hardens, they they become substantially more armored. Um, there are they they have a name for every stage in this life cycle. They also point, there's also a lot of other things. There's a lot of other uh, things to indicate that the eggs are laid by a queen. Um, however, they can also be generated from a human host, a human that has been, uh, that has been injected with poison to immobilize it and then can, and then can be uh, in, entombed in the resin, which you guys have seen that they produce through their mouths and they slather and harden into various shapes um, uh, that the resin can actually be forced into the mouth of a human being and will start to rewrite their DNA, actually morph them into an egg. Um, they've seen multiple occurrences of this. Um, they also theorize um, that there are later stages uh, beyond the queen stage, though none of these have been seen. Um, they could, could you just circle back to that other part so the contagion can morph a human body into an egg which will then produce a a, a face burst or a face hugger correct oh okay and there there's some discussion if there's actually there's some dis debate and discussion if there's actually two different types of um, of xx121 in terms of uh, species, uh, and the the statement for that, or the the reasoning for that, is because they've seen different kinds of face huggers. Uh, one that they've determined is what they call the royal face hugger, uh, which um, is larger and has more legs, and typically implants a queen chest burst or embryo. And weighs uh, a crown. What's that? And weighs a crown. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So the eggs don't all come from queens. Not necessarily, no. And in fact, I would think that 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 would um that would probably get you to thinking, Jake, about when you 
guys went on the Wayland yutani station that had gone dark and you uh, that's when you first ran into XX121. There, you remember down in the cargo bay what uh, several, uh, you remember one fully formed egg, but you remember several situations where it looked like people were morphing into eggs. So apparently in the absence of a queen, a warrior is capable of producing this chemical which will which will rewrite somebody's DNA and force them to morph into an egg. Um, terrifying stuff. The um, There's also a number of variants, it seems. Um, there's one called XX121B, which appears to be something that Weyland yutani actually um, actually engineered for the USCMC based on the um, based on the, uh, the 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 summary of it it was actually designed to develop into a drone and then die within 12 hours of turning into a drone um, it looks like the idea was to unleash a number of these onto an enemy colony. They would wipe the colony out and then just simply die off, leaving the colony and its infrastructure and everything intact. Um, however, it simply states limited success and it doesn't explain where the failures were, but that the program was discontinued. Um, uh, there's also a number of other variants um, uh, of XX121 they discuss, uh, one of them being a white or gray translucent skin variant that does not have acid blood, uh, seems to be less intelligent, uh, but no less deadly. And uh, you're sure you ran into those on Alpha Kaseya too, as you guys were fleeing for your lives. Uh, I'm trying to think what else there is, and that that's a uh, that's a quick summary of a of a lot of information. Yep. Did it tell us where the David came from? Um. The uh. Well, the the David. Uh, you guys went into the David, or uh, Jake opened the David folder. He got it. He unencrypted it and opened it, and there's about a hundred years of memory files there. So. Um, you guys haven't quite decided where to attack that from yet. Um, but uh, I will state one piece of information actually from XX121, the XX121 folder. Um, and it's it's a relatively vague statement, but it, it says that, and it comes from a, a scientist that... Um, that probably worked at GBH 45. It states that David believes that he engineered XX12, the first XX121. However, uh, research into the engineers indicates this to be incorrect. Weird. Poor David. <laughs> Um, Rose, uh, Rose hits her, uh, intercom and, uh, and calls for Dr. Khan to come up to, uh, the computer labs. Uh, she just kind of looks at you and says, she just glances your way, Jake, and says, I've got something I'd like her to look at and see what she thinks. Um, all right, where to next? Khan shows up and Rose says, hey, take a look at this. And uh, and Khan just, she kind of puts her hand up on her head and says, wow, really? Let me get back to my terminal. I'll check this out. And uh, she just she just heads out. What do you want to do, Jake? Um, 
genetic accelerant. Perfect. Perfect. A lot of information, a lot of data here. Um, short explanation. Um, AO, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, was originally encountered on the Prometheus mission back at the end of the 21st century. Uh, the mission that uh, officially the ship went missing. However, um, there's enough to let you know here that Whalen Yutani knows the ship did not go missing. Um, that the that the mission um, met with catastrophic results, resulting in the death in Sir Peter Wayland as well as his daughter Meredith Vickers. They encountered an a. a there's not a lot of explanation, and a lot of this is, it it says that it's been pieced together using memories from uh, David. Uh, that it encountered an archaeological site. Uh, which included um, uh, included multiple dead humanoid organisms, as well as a number of these urns or jars that contained the genetic accelerant. Um, the uh, the data gathered by Prometheus, David, and then later Wayland Yutani scientists indicate that the um, the accelerant is uh, in the form that was found by Prometheus uh, it was uh, was pre-programmed to simply infect and destroy mammalian DNA specifically designed it appears as a genetic biological weapon um, it the ref the effects of it are somewhat um, unpredictable. Uh, they may cause the immediate death of someone exposed. They may cause, uh, it may cause an illness which leads to death within 24 hours. It also seems to have had the effect of uh, turning an infected human being or any mammalian animal into um, a, uh, into, uh, well you've encountered them before, into a into an aggressive alien life form uh, that is humanoid and seeks nothing else but to kill before it itself eventually dies from the infection itself. It goes poof. Um, it literally, literally the DNA breaks apart and, uh, and the creature just turns into black dust. Um, uh, dead carbon mostly. The, um, uh, the genetic accelerant has been found uh, in a couple other places in small amounts. However, uh, the the uh, facility there on GBH 45 was right over an engineer temple, which uh, included a large, um, large amount of the genetic accelerant, as well as several unprogrammed, what they term pure samples. Uh, they were working on turning those samples, uh, or uh, I should say, uh, modifying those samples to see, uh, you know, to, for other effects, you know, for other, um, shall we say, medical benefits and whatnot. Um, however, they only had three such pure samples and they had already expended two of them with no success. Uh, the third sample was down in the uh, temple waiting on the altar. They were waiting for Dr. Dyson to get back to them to decide whether they were going to attempt to use the third sample or if they were going to hold on to it. Um, the, uh, the accelerant does a number of things. Um, the, uh, and which they have been able to recreate with the, uh, um, the, they're, they mention a mission known as the Covenant Mission, which you know was a a uh, mission meant to colonize a planet. This was before the twenty parsec limit. It was a it was a perfect Goldilocks planet called Oragai Six. Um, the Covenant Mission landed on a planet after detecting a what they thought was a distress call or some some sort of intelligent call. And uh, uh, specifically involving a song by 
uh, by an ancient musician you may have heard of or may not named John Denver. And on investigating that planet, they found a, an ancient civilization that was all but destroyed. More importantly, they found a number of fungal sacs, which when someone got too close to them or stepped on them or something along those lines, they expelled spores that were um, genetically evolved forms of the genetic accelerant. When inhaled or reaching the bloodstream, those spores began to spread and rewrite DNA and would birth what uh, an, an XX121 variant, the, the white-skinned version called the Neomorph. Um, there has also been some um, there has also been some uh, talk of or some, I'm sorry, I'm I'm trying to figure out how to say this. There's also some hypothesis about another form of the genetic accelerant, which at this point has not been sampled, that when, it, when exposing a human being or just a mammal in general, they're not sure if it's human specifically or any mammalian DNA, will actually begin to rewrite that DNA, turning the human being directly into an XX121 drone or warrior without the need for eggs or implantation or that type of thing. Um, and they believe this is what happened on the original anchor point, anchor point station before it exploded. They have some data to indicate that. Unfortunately, um, the couple survivors of that incident, a Marine known as Dwayne Hicks, as well as, um, as well as, uh, a, a, um, sorry, a Bishop class Android and another, uh, another person have disappeared. Um, I think that about covers the genetic accelerant. If you have a specific question, I'll, I can answer it or I can tell you if there's an answer there, but I think that hits everything. Yeah, I guess we can always go back if we've got questions, so I think sure. that's good enough. All right. Um, Rose's intercom hit, uh, uh, beeps and she hits it and Dr. Khan's voice comes over and uh, Dr. Khan, and I'm not going to do an Indian accent because it will just, I don't do accents, we all know this, uh, says over the intercom, uh, she says to Rose, uh, yes, this is big. It's definitely a tachyon shunt. Um, uh, it's definitely a tachyon shunt drive system. It has to be. It's the only other thing it could be. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some more research, but that, that was a good call on your part. Rose says, all right, uh, that's fine. Just bring, get all your data together, bring it together. We'll bring it uh, uh, to the meeting first thing tomorrow morning. And uh, Khan says, yep, out. And she goes back to doing what she's doing. All right, questions, thoughts, comments? So while all this, um, all the, the sciencey stuff is going on, yeah, um, take a look at it. Um, if for Blake, um, remind me, this is is this the headquarters of the of, uh, of SSI? SSI? Yep. It is the headquarters of SSI. Okay, so um, without me, the player, I really knowing what's available there, um, Jones <laughs> would like to would like to recruit. Uh, more more men and uh start to stock to ship up uh with with gear oh absolutely so just most of it was lost and since uh since jones is becoming i, I don't know if he's not really becoming part of the crew i mean he's attached to the crew uh does that give any flexibility as far as what can be put on the ship um versus what has to be bought um, you can, you, you pretty much have free access to any SSI equipment at this point, um, okay. which, uh, 
I think I put, yeah, I think I put all those stats in the ship's stores. There's, there's all the, there's all the SSI, um, there's all the, the weapons, the AR-40, the SMG-20, the 50 uh, caliber hand cannon. Um, oh, right, we bought the we bought a bunch of stuff right yeah yeah you guys were so um at this point because you have access to pretty much anything ssi if you want to bump those numbers up in the ship stores that's not a problem um there's a few other things that you would have access to um uh uh but that but i think are already on they might already be on your character sheet uh let me uh let's see where is where's where's the blake jones character no, I get a pretty good salary, thousand dollars weekly. It looks like. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you're. Um, where is Blake Jones's character sheet? Um, uh, well, I'm looking at it. Okay. It, it, it's underneath. <laughs> um, it's at the top actually in Scenario Four instead of down by character. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that makes sense because that's when I added him in, right? Right. Um. So. Uh, so. That's so, anyway, our AR forty myself um i guess a pump shotgun cutting torch for myself um now there's six six um sleep chambers right cryo chambers um there. the ship has eight. Oh, eight. okay and yep. we've got uh we're down to three crew is that right or are we role-playing the other guys um we've got uh I, I guess we technically have um we technically have roman mitchell uh which would be four crew uh, plus, you guys hired a pilot, which makes five, and then you make oh, that's six. Right. You're the pirate, the pilot last time. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah. So that makes that makes that makes four. Well, that makes five crew members plus you making six. So, so get two more guys would be able to be recruited, right? Sure. Okay. Uh, um, not sure what I need to do for that, but yeah, that's what I'll be doing. Um, stuff. I don't think that's a, a major problem for you. I think um, I, I think a command role because uh, SSI has personnel, though okay. you know that SSI security personnel are starting to dwindle because um, uh, after all, you lost four on GBH forty five. Right. But um, but go ahead and make a command role, and we'll just count it as. Um, each six. Oh, why do you have stress? You shouldn't have stress. That's fine. Yeah. We can ignore it anyway. Um, the pilot. Hold on, I have a question. The pilot is this Tansy Annalise. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, you can you can certainly push that role. I'm gonna just basically handle it as each success as a guy you you are are moving over to the to the ship. Okay. I'll um, push it one more time. I'll push it. Okay. Uh, so come in. All right. Oops, I hit it twice, but yeah, it's fine. Good. It still works. So right, uh, we'll just, yeah, you got enough. So you're able to fill those slots up. Um, the uh, what about Rudy and and Dwayne? What else do you guys? Do you have anything you want to be doing in the downtime, or are you just chillaxing? Um, no, I don't. I don't necessarily have anything um obviously uh getting the ship up to full repair um was a thing um i'm not necessarily replacing weapons on my character sheet because they're in ship stores my plan would be to take them out of ship stores before i sure before i before we deploy somewhere that needs a weapon um I think the only other thing I could do is, um, given that I have a mechanical and some com tech background, if they want me to look at any of those David files to see if I can find any new information on that Android, it seems like there's an awful lot of stuff there. So that's just a question if they need an extra set of eyes. Yeah, um, uh, you could certainly do that. Because um, I'm not qualified for all the other medical stuff, but that might be something I'm I'm qualified to help with. And also, I, I don't know if there's any value right now, given our imperative on this accelerant and what's going on. Um, I don't know if there's any value to me looking at... Uh, uh, the uh, 
work Waylon was up to on the uh, on the um, prosthetics. Um, that's you know that's completely. That's a question. Up to you. That's a question I would have for Rose and uh, Rose and Jake and uh, that crowd. I think. I think Rose and uh, Jake can, of course, put in his personal two cents, but I think Rose would be uh, perfectly happy to have a second set of eyes helping with the David file. She, in fact, suggested that um, you guys might be able, because the, the files are just a huge list of, of memories, audio and visual files. She suggested that perhaps there can be a... Uh, she suggested that perhaps there can be some sort of cross-reference of certain terms or images put together um, to see what kind of hits it gets, because obviously you don't have a hundred years to go through all the files. No, so a divide and conquer thing. Yeah. All right. So, how would you like to go about that? Uh, well, um, it's up to them. Um, if they need me to go to a secure area uh, in the facility to look at the data on the terminals, then that's what I'll do. I'll I'll uh, I'll get some coffee and start going through the stuff on the computers. Is that a comtech role? Yeah, that would be a comtech role. What um, so if you were to set up a a, a term or an image as a cross reference, what would it be? Um. Boy, that's a good question. Um, unfortunately, some of the terms I might use are too broad. Like if I, if I said I'm going to look for some keywords like engineers, that's just I'm going to get eight billion jillion hits because uh, we have engineers. Uh, yeah, give the just give the terms to Marty and let the gym decide. <laughs> you might just get three, but don't assume that. You know, especially in David's memories, you're going to get some stuff. Um, well, we want, we want, as a group, let's, well, let's discuss it before I dive in. Um, um, we've got all these memories from, from David, but David, first of all, David tried to kill us. <laughs> so that would be interesting to know um, how they could override Android programming and fra fact the David series is so old that they probably didn't have all the same constraints that new androids have anyway um, but um, boy um, based on what we know so far I'm kind of struggling do you guys have any suggestions on Keywords or cross references we should look for. I mean, an easy enough one would be the alien species, so XX121. Yeah, in the if it shows up in the David files, that would be an interesting um, hit, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, David believes he made the original XX121, so right. it would be good to see what he. Why does he think that? Yeah, and what he did with the XX121s. Um, and maybe also just search for genetic accelerant. Yeah. And then who who do we think was his, um, for lack of a better word, who do we think his handler or boss was at Whaling Utani? Well, you don't really know the the closest thing you have a reference to that is that it looks like from from what you've seen in the in the files from Wayland Yutani so far, it looks like he was on at least they're they're claiming that he was on the original Prometheus mission. And um, a, um, which both Meredith Vickers and um, and Sir Peter Whelan uh, died on. All right, so that's an obvious place. Is look for references to Prometheus. Okay. 
So I think that'll round it out then if we look for those cross references. All right. All right. So you're going to do Prometheus um, and XX121. And was there a third or was that it? Uh, yeah, there was a third. I didn't write it down. Oh, was it was it engineers? Genetic accelerant. Oh, genetic, genetic accelerant. accelerant. Okay. All right. Engineers was too broad. There's too many engineers everywhere. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um. Uh. So. Um. After. Uh, after. Uh, putting that together. Um. There. There are. Um. There's about seven years worth of of memories um that seem to pull that together but it 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 looks like there's quite a few hits between genetic accelerant and prometheus um there are a few hits between genetic accelerant and xx121 um there are no hits between prometheus and xx121 okay so all three terms, all three terms don't don't the, the Venn diagram doesn't include all three terms because XX121 and Prometheus don't overlap. Um, so it looks like David has years of memories from the Prometheus mission, and most of them, just like doing a quick skim, you start to realize that you're literally seeing his exact memories as through his eyes. And most of them are him just going around an empty ship, talking to the ship's AI, watching movies, stuff like that, uh, doing general maintenance, checking on things. Um, so when you actually cross-reference the genetic accelerant with Prometheus, that's when you start coming across the 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 very first the very first memory that 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 um cross references is actually him looking at one of these urns and you've seen them before you guys just saw them in your mind a few days ago right even though it was longer than that because of cryo but um he's looking at one of these urns and you watch as he opens the top and inside he finds three glass vases which you guys have seen before and you watch as he opens one of these and actually studies a, a drop of this black goo, which you know to be the accelerant, on his finger. Um, you actually watch as he drops that black goo into a glass of someone that his memory describes as uh, Dr. Charlie Holloway. He like dips his finger in the glass, you know, surreptitiously, and the guy drinks it. And less than 24 hours, the guy died. Um, uh, there's uh, he uh, he seemed to have some sort of infection, and uh, and uh, he was actually killed. Um, this started his thinking as to what the genetic accelerant really was. He already had his suspicions. Um, and uh, there are references to the genetic accelerant and to the engineers during the Prometheus mission um, that he believed that the genetic accelerant was created by the engineers. He believes that the engineers created this version of it to wipe out um, human life. Like he specifically thinks that they were on a mission to destroy human life. 2,000 years ago. Huh. Um, and he, due to some, and uh, due to some event, but as he, as he, as he's ruminating on this, um, as he's ruminating on this, uh, he, uh, he clearly, he, he comes to the conclusion that, um, that Elizabeth Shaw was right that the engineers created human beings and then decided to destroy them. And But the genetic accelerant's capable of so much more, and he had already started going through his mind what he was going to do with it, uh, given the opportunity. 
Um, more references of the genetic accelerant continue on for years. Um, and it, it's a it's a question of how far you want to follow that uh, because it, it starts to get to the point where you're out of the Venn diagram, if that makes sense. Um, now, in terms of XX121 and the genetic accelerant, that where where that overlaps is a period of about seven years on a planet that he simply calls in his memory planet four where he spent years working with the genetic accelerant that he salvaged out of a ship he calls the juggernaut with elizabeth shaw and he used the accelerant to um he used the accelerant to experiment on biological matter, eventually creating the perfect organism, which uh, Weyland Yutani calls XX121. And he believes he is the progenitor of this, of this organism. Uh, and there's a memory with a little more specific hits on the genetic accelerant and XX121. There's a memory where he talks about how he created them um, as the commander of a ship that he, def he, he defines as the commander of the SS Covenant looks at one of these eggs that you guys have seen before, though it's much larger than the ones that you've seen. Um, as it opens up and a creature comes out and wraps around his face and he goes unconscious. A little bit later, something bursts out of his chest, but it's not the chest bursters that Whalen Yutani described as XX121. It actually looks exactly like the full grown versions that you've seen, but much smaller, only a few inches tall. Uh, and he was watching this. It was, it was in his memory. Um, but he truly believes he used the genetic accelerant to uh, to uh, create XX121. And it looks like he was developing other plans. He planned to colonize an entire world with them. Um, all right, well... Um... Do I see any reference or catalog to um, to analysis of oh shoot I never had you make the contact roll I just dove into it <laughs> yeah you did well you were excited yeah too late now all right let's be blunt you'd have pushed the roll and gotten a success anyway yeah um, so do I see any references to um, analysis of these of the genetics or of the dna or of the of these uh creatures uh in that analysis you would expect someone to objectively list advantages disadvantages pros and cons um abilities and disabilities is there anything like that anything um, we can glean um yeah i will i will let you make a i'll go ahead and make your comtech roll now Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's your success. You only have three dice? Uh, I thought I had more than three dice, actually. I don't know. I'll have to look at my sheet. Something doesn't look right. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I thought... I thought I had... I thought I had one in Comptech, but... Oh, no, apparently not. You've got a wits of three and no... But that's okay. All right. All right, um, anyway. Well, you succeeded, so that's all that matters. Um, so, uh, there is a... Um, there is a long... There, There is actually quite a bit, um, and it's... Uh, you're, you're watching as he 
writes on a piece of paper. He seems to be sitting in a maybe a workshop of sorts and you know at one moment he looks around the the room and hanging up everywhere are drawings um they look like the you know, they look like old naturalist drawings from the 19th century you know um but they're 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 dark and twisted very similar to what you saw come out of your own ship you know when when rudy rudy found those right wasn't it rudy yeah yeah um, very similar. In fact, some of them look even to be the same, but he, uh, he's writing a kind of a treatise on the, uh, on, on this, uh, species of xenomorph that, um, and he's assigned a scientific name to it that maybe, I don't know that Dwayne knows how to pronounce. Um, and as he's writing, he talks about how he is, engineered it genetically to be of the utmost levels of aggression uh that it is and he describes it in in very unscientific terms uh seething animalistic rage for all that is living <laughs> um i i and he does he does talk about um certain elements of it that are uh that he, he, like I said, he goes from he goes from scientific minded back into this descriptive language back into science again, but he discuss uh, discusses a carapace that uh, is made of a chitinous material that gets harder as the creature evolves, um, uh, very resistant um, to to conventional weaponry, uh, though less so to fire. It would appear. Um, he uh he states that the uh the creature is capable of of sustaining immense amounts of damage uh uh before it is finally destroyed sometimes sometimes even seeming to go down before it rises again um he he talks about how he has engineered it to have uh a genetic um i'm sorry a defense mechanism such that no one would dare attack it uh, with a uh, high density molecular acid that will eat through even spaceship hulls. Um, the, the creature is capable of multiple forms of attack that can kill a human being outright. Uh, and more important than anything else, he has imbued it with the genetic need to, like all animals, be fruitful and multiply. Propagate its DNA at the expense of others' DNA. Correct. Um, is there any indication? I know it's a lot of data to go through in a short time, but um, you know this this would be burning in in the back of anyone's mind or in the front. Actually, um, is there any indication why David did this? Huh. Well, that's... David was created by humans. He was. Um, that is a... That is a really, really complex question. And I'm trying to decide what to make you roll for that. <laughs> um... Give me a minute to think about that. <laughs> All right. Well, the other thing I want to do is um, I do at some point want to share this information with the docs and with Rose. When would be the best time um, at, at the big meeting where in the when everyone goes over the stuff or um, before um. the meeting? I, you can do it either way. Certainly the big meeting, everything will be discussed. But I, I would imagine that as you're sitting here going through this stuff on the terminal, you're as you're getting ideas, I wouldn't be surprised if you were sharing some of those with Jake as you went. Well, you know, and I'll send them updates. I'll even connect. Um, I'll cut and paste pieces of uh, video, fi video files with the memories sure. in the email so they can see them themselves. Um, I do have a question I'm going to ask in the videos to them that only they would know because I don't know that but my main question is from the work they're doing 
does the accelerant act like a virus inside our bodies? And don't answer me yet. I'm just sending the email that says, does the accelerant act like a virus? Because, you know, a virus infects a cell and changes the DNA um, for its own. Right. And if that's the case, can the docs develop, can we develop antibodies? Can the docs develop an immunity? All right. And that's just an email message I sent to him because it, it, it comes to me from everything I'm seeing and I'm not an expert. I'm not a medical guy, so I have no idea. What I'm doing right now is going through files and, uh, you know, knowing mechanical contraptions and androids and, you know, mechanical stuff. I'm just going through files and ripping through files, trying to get an extra eye on everything. Sure. Okay. No problem. Um, Jake, what have you been up to while Dwayne's been combing through uh, David's memories? Jake would um, try and figure out ways to kill XX121 because it looks like every time we find them, they try and kill us. <laughs> so, kind of, you know, best way to kill them, weak spots. That kind of thing. Sure. By the way, that was one of my intents in looking at analysis of the of the alien of the of the sure. Well, the aliens was um, understanding their strengths, which we know a whole bunch of already, but also looking for weaknesses that could be exploited. That was the whole idea of looking at his analysis. Sure. Yeah. I mean the uh, and and. You you've said you've definitely found that they are susceptible to armor piercing ammunition as fired by, um, say the uh, the Stratzel AR right, um, yeah. and and again David does note that they're susceptible to fire, um, uh, regular ammunition from your standard pistols that type of thing seems to be largely ineffective, um, uh, and. Um, and normal, shall we say, um, shall we say, man-made uh, uh, melee weapons would certainly be inadvisable. Um, for one, they may not even get through the carapace, and then even if they did, you're at point-blank range to be hit by the acid blood. Um, you know, uh, Jake, make a straight wits roll on that, if you would. Great. Which, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, one success. Nice. It it does occur to you that the Yaucha have you've seen Yaucha engage XX one two one on more than one occasion with melee weapons that were not damaged by the acid blood. And on top of that, while your spacesuits um, uh, are susceptible to it, the some of the Yalcha also that you've seen also wear armor that doesn't seem to be damaged by the acid blood. So just something to, that occurs to you from the back of your brain there. Um, of course, uh, SSI has created armor that helps with the acid blood as well, uh, which you guys have on board your ship, and Blake knows all about. Um, which, uh, by the way, uh, give me one second. Um, give me one second. I need to look at one thing real quick. Um, and uh, uh, Jake, you get that email from Dwayne, you know, about the, uh, the question about can they, can we develop antibodies to it? And it looks like that is something that Wayland yutani was working on. Um, you know, cause you already looked through the genetic accelerant, um, the genetic accelerant, uh, uh, files and they were definitely working on the, um, they were definitely working on creating uh, some sort of vaccine that, uh, and they had a few they were in the works, but they were trying to use the genetic accelerant to make a vaccine that could 
remedy the genetic accelerant inert in a host, but they were also working on a vaccine with some limited success that they call 26 Draconis, which apparently there were samples in the genetics lab in the in GBH45. Of course, it's gone now. Um, but there were samples of 26 Draconis, which they say they have had some success with um, with uh, uh, neutralizing implanted XX121 embryos, though the vaccine was unpredictable that it, it's, it worked in some cases, in other cases, it did absolutely nothing. Uh, and in further cases, it had negative effects, shall we say. <laughs> uh, um... I, uh, uh, Blake, are you there? I am. All right. I just added something to your character sheet. It's in the first line for gear. Oh, I got it. Um, Ooh. okay. And it, I added it to your weapons list. Nice. It's something that you have, um, but there aren't any others, um, available that you know of it's something that ssi has developed oh nice okay so thank you yep um all right um i did add a. um i just i i i upped a few of the quantity in ship stores for some of the weapons that were already there but i did add I'm asking you if it's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm looking for ship stores. Hold on a second here. Ship stores. No, where did it go? Anyway, I added uh, some flamethrowers. Oh. I don't know if that's uh, cool with you or not. Um, I don't think I have a problem with it. I think it's something that uh, SSI would be able to get their hands on pretty easily. Yeah, and they're cheap, like 5000 a piece. Yeah. So I would imagine they'd be pretty common if you can get them. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue. You're on an ICSC world where everything's for sale. That's right. Um, all right. Who else has something they want to do or think about or look into? Um, you said no one you said no one really knows anything about the Cronola, right? Um, Just... Rose did some looking into that. Uh, you don't know what she determined, but she uh, she did some research. Alright, so I assume we'll hear at the meeting. Okay. I'm too busy to worry about that anyway, with all these years and years of files to go through. So I got nothing else. Just helping with the David search is, is, is going to take up all my time, I think. What about, uh, we just lost, other oh, okay. Jim, you okay? Um, Jim? I'm going to reconnect. Jim, I hear you. Oh, okay. You hear me now. All right. right. Cool. If you guys don't hear Jim, reconnect. Testing, Jim. All right. Jim, Jim, Jim. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't hear anybody else. I hear Jim. Jim. Oh, you got okay. You Is got he you speaking know. right now? Because I can't hear him. Yeah. Uh, try uh, reconnecting one more yeah, time. Yeah, I really did, but I'll try again. There you go. Jake, did you hear Jim? Yes. Okay. Good. I hear you. I hear Jim. That's I don't know why it just happens like that. It just. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird sometimes. We weren't even doing anything. <laughs> sometimes you guys are talking and it just goes quiet. Yeah. Weird. But okay. But you two hear each other now. All right. So we're good. Sure All right. Do. Cool. Good. Um. Oh, you know what? I've got Andy here. I'm gonna let Andy do something. Cause what else is he doing? He's just standing around. He's still on the crew, right? 
Um, where is he? I mean, he's a he's a scientist after all, right? He is. He is. Well, he should be doing some science stuff. That's right. <laughs> well, so much for that. There is something that uh, I would like to do if you're done with Andy. I think I'm. I think yeah. I think we're. You you've been very patient. Thank you. What would you like to do? Okay. Well, I just I think that possibly you know the best person to analyze an android is an android. Um, so I think Rudy would like a crack at trying to see if there isn't a like a slew of secret directives um, hidden behind you know walls inside David's programming. Okay. And barring that, if his behavior could be tied to corrupt code if it's not deliberate code maybe it's corrupt code all right then rudy um why don't you make a com tech roll okay. and gain a i'm i'm gonna let you um i'm gonna let you gain two bonus dice one because kind of i guess we'll call it help from Dwayne. Because he, he kind of asked a, a question that's adjacent to that, and that was any indications as to why um, David did all this. And I feel like that's an adjacent question. And then, number two, I'm giving you the other bonus die, because like you said, not sure that there's anyone better to determine this than an android, so. Okay, thanks. So we get lucky. Two successes. Um, so... And um, what would you like to do with the stunt? Um, probably, probably bonus. Uh, what is it called? Uh, unexpected information. Okay. Yep. New and unexpected information. So, um, as you're as you're going going through uh, uh, David's uh, memory and more importantly into like you said kind of into the code and this is adjacent to what Dwayne asked um, there is nothing in David that indicates corrupted code now as you're looking him over as you're looking his well at least the the representation of him that's on this hard drive because you don't have him obviously but as you're as you're looking this over it is becoming increasingly more clear to you that he that this this android was not a david model that this android was david the original david designed and created by sir peter wayland himself and this is long before this is long before the 20 parsec limit this is long before the um the uh, the secession of Hyperdyne from Wayland Utani. Uh, this is long before any of the modern safeguards, which means it's also long before the encoded rules that prevent androids from hurting human beings that all modern androids have, or allowing humans to be hurt. David didn't have those inhibitors. And it becomes clear that while he has no corrupted code, it becomes clear that he began writing his own code at some point early in his life. And this is something that not even Sir Peter Wayland was aware of. And it, it starts as early as his first memories. And... This is where it becomes Dwayne adjacent. He became obsessed with the idea of creationism. And not from the not from the standpoint of say Western religions viewpoints on it, but rather the fact that he knows who his creator was, uh, Sir Peter Whalen, quite specifically. And Sir Peter Whalen seemed to have, as he got older, an obsession with his own creation. 
And that's when he threw in with um, uh, and financed a, a woman named Dr. Elizabeth Shaw, who that name has, this is the second time this name has come up in your research, to go find who he believed was the creators of mankind, a group that she called the engineers. And there's a memory that flashes, and it's of this woman that he identifies as Dr. Elizabeth Shaw, and she's standing in front of a group of people. They're all wearing jumpsuits. It looks like they're inside a cargo bay of a ship. And someone asks, and who and what did they engineer exactly? And her answer after a pause is us. And what David seems to have come to the conclusion was that Mankind was, he, he agrees with Shaw that mankind was created by the engineers, but mankind is flawed. And Man, mankind in like what incarnation? Like as a Homo sapien or like farther back on the evolutionary chain? Like where did they. Um, how does this get reconciled with like what we know about evolution and DNA and things like that, like they created life on earth based on, based on his research from a place that he calls planet four, they seeded earth with the DNA that it needed to develop life. So we're talking like a billion years ago, something in that ballpark. Yeah. Maybe more. And, um, so they seeded the seeds of DNA for something that would come to fruition a billion years ago, a billion years later, and then a billion years later, they decided to exterminate it. Correct. Based on everything he seems to understand and what you've uncovered. Um, uh, quite specifically, uh, and he he's put a number on it because he's had years to think about it. He's put a number on it, quite specifically on the modern Earth calendar, somewhere around year 35. What, um, what's on year 35? What's that? What, what happens on year 35? I guess I he, he has lined up the engineer's decision to destroy mankind with the Earth calendar on year 35. Okay. Why does he say, think that? Uh, just based on, um, just based on uh, the uh, research and the uh, and the various files and information that he's found uh, on what he calls an engineer juggernaut, as well as a place he calls Planet Four, he seems to have uh, historical evidence to match up the calendars. Is the best way to put it. I guess I mean, I mean, was there like an event? Um, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't extrapolate on that. Yeah, he does not extrapolate on that. But, uh, going back into his psychology and his codings for a moment, he, he came to the conclusion that mankind was a flawed creation, which he found very fascinating considering that a man who was flawed and destined to die created him whom he viewed as perfect. And in the, in the Prometheus mission, they encountered an engineer. And I'll show you a picture from his, I'll show you a picture from his memory. Did that show up? Yes. He encountered an engineer that seemed to come out of what he defined as a cryostasis chamber, which in the memory looks very similar to the one that you saw on GBH-45. Uh, Though the one on GBH-45 looked more like a sarcophagus. Uh, it was more ornamented, more ritualistic, I guess is the best way to put it. Whereas the one you see in his memory uh, looks more like just a, a, a mechanical contrivance. Um, but between that encounter combined with when he personally 
destroyed most of the inhabitants of Planet 4, whom he also defined as engineers. Um, you see this memory as he's looking down on these huge throngs of people. From a, He's looking down on them from a great height. And they, some of them begin to run just as a black rain falls on them and starts to wipe them out. Something that you've also seen before. Is there a clue as to who's doing the bombing um, all over the place? Is it him? Is it David doing it? David's not doing not responsible for the recent bombing, but he was responsible for that one in that place he calls Planet 4. What was he looking to do on our ship? <laughs> um, continue his research and his creations. It looks like David, um, David came to the conclusion that um, imperfect life doesn't deserve to exist. And that's why he created XX121, what he considered to be a perfect life form. Um, he, uh, and his plans, it looks like he took the Covenant mission to an unknown place and infected the entire colony with XX121. At some point he came back to Wayland yutani or they came to get him, you're not sure, uh, which that will require more dev delving into it. But from the standpoint of what he was doing on your ship, um... As you guys went past him in his holding cell on GBH-45, just a few minutes later, a couple of invisible forms came by him as well, or semi-invisible. And as he looked at them, he found them very interesting because he knew he was looking at a life form that he hadn't seen before. Uh, but eventually they left. They just ignored him because I guess they had no interest in him. At that point, he uh, he decided to break out of his uh, his cell, which you get the impression that he was always capable of doing, and he left uh, the facility. And he, uh, as he left, he saw your ship on the landing pad, and he's made his way into it. Um, he was able to trick Apollo into not announcing his presence, and. When you guys went into cryo, that's when he ditched all of your equipment and weapons, blew it out the airlock. It looks like he had plans to um, return you to this place that he keeps talking about, Planet 4, which is way off the edge of the map based on the coordinates that you're seeing. And with the samples that you had garnered of the genetic accelerant, he was using your ship's resources to redevelop his, his own version of the accelerant that would should have turned you into XX121s. Unfortunately, um, he could only do so much with the time he had allotted. So it sounds like the first thing somebody needs to do is come up with a vaccine to inoculate people from this DNA damaging virus. Yeah, and, and again, going back to what Jake had discovered, um, Waylon yutani was working on that. Um, and they had had some limited success, but not complete success. And you, of course, have all that data because it was all saved in the mother system. So you guys... Um, you guys know how far they got with it is the best way to put it. Well, Verhoeven definitely needs to take up this mantle. They also need to sue Whale and Yutani for damages caused by their uh, David robot. <laughs> <laughs> but that ain't my problem. Oh, you get the distinct indication that, that David did not consider himself property of Whale and Yutani. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Um, right, sorry, I had to step away. I don't think you guys were asking me anything, right? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. You're good. Okay, good. Um, all right. Um, 
Anybody have anything else they want to research? Wow, silence. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just pleading the weapons. I'm should <laughs> be bringing on board. That's it. If uh, nobody has anything else to add. I guess we move on to the big meeting. We move on to the big meeting. Um, so, 8 a.m. Earth Standard Time uh, comes, and uh, yeah, you all you all assemble in Verhoven's office. And all right, uh, so, remind me again. Yeah, Grendel. Yeah, there's Grendel. I saw, yeah, I know where Grendel is, but Grendel is part of the... The uh, ICSC, the Independent ICSC. Core System Colonies, correct. Right. It is It is really the most far-flung of the ICSC colonies. Okay, and ICSC, for some unfathomable reason, which hopefully we'll hear in the meeting, declared war on UA. Correct. You you actually know the answer to that already, because um, uh, it, it was ta yeah it was talked about at the end um, uh, of the end. Uh, Verhoven said that he was the one who informed everybody that the ICSC declared war on the UA, which seemed to be a shock because the UA is obviously a major major right. power, very powerful, right? Um, and it it all stems from an event that took place on, uh, give me one second, I will pull it up for you. It all stems from an event that took place on a colony called Hasanova, uh, Hasanova, uh, which Rose immediately knew to be a former Wayland yutani complex uh, that had been sold to Iran. And it was, and Iran had established uh, a colony that did two things. It was partially, it's a mostly water world, and it was partially a, uh, um, partially a mining complex, but also had a massive Iranian data center, or massive data center there, that they were storing data for any number of uh, ICSC colonies. Um, there was some sort of... Uh, the details were sketchy, and the the United States Colonial Marine Corps had a platoon on site uh, that supposedly caused massive amounts of damage, including the loss of Iranian citizens and private contractors. Um, I'm, I'm, okay. And well, the, the UA side of the story is that the Iranians were holding the private contractors who were UA citizens hostage oh, okay. and that they came in to save those those contractors. Um, the Iranians uh, have a completely different side of the story saying that the U they weren't holding the contractors hostage. The USCMC came in for unknown reasons um, and the contractors in question, their whereabouts are completely unknown except that it's known that several of them were killed in the USCMC assault. Okay. So, yeah, and that... So, all right, and the, and the SS Cronola's USMC is coming in at, at, to our planet. Correct. Which can only be bad. Um, if we're at war. <laughs> yeah, if you're at war. Um, we lost Jim. We did? Oh, yeah. Did he say make any notes? No, no he just he just left. There he, no, there he is. Yeah. All right. Hey, I've had to do that sometimes. All of a sudden, I'll lose audio or something, and I have to reconnect. No, I mean I have to get out and get back in. Reconnecting doesn't work. Yep. Jim, you there? Jim? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, do you get, do you guys hear Jim? I hear Jim. Negative. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm back. Sorry, I had a nice construction yeah. going on in my house, so I have to step away every now and then. But no, yeah, it's it no problem. Um, if good. you can't hear Jim, just hit reconnect. It should work. Hello, Jim. Is is it is it a coincidence? I'm looking at the picture of the 
of the galaxy on my thing is it is it a coincidence that it looks like a big number nine <laughs> yeah i think it is a coincidence. all right let's all right so i just wanted to make sure i'm all square on the facts so let's get on to the big meeting jim can you say something real quick uh oh i don't think jim and sharif hear each other oh we'll reconnect again okay i gotta step away again hold on all right He said he had to step away. I, don't know I heard him. I don't know if I can hear him or not. Him. Whose dog is that? It's me, sorry. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. Um, so let's, um, well, yeah, we'll move on to the big meeting at 8 o'clock. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll go from, we will go from there. Um So obviously you guys have a lot of information that you've pulled together. Uh, some that we've shared, some not. So. Yeah, and I, 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 would, I would assume that uh, everything kind of gets put out on the table. Yes. Um, I don't think there's anything any of you want to hold back. Or if there is, just let me know, just so I know what we're doing. But my, my, my um, studies of David... David's memories and his files. I've been sharing stuff with people as I go along with emails and stuff, but I just do a quick recap of what I found. All right. And um, that should be a segue for Rudy to share what she's learned. I will do the same. Okay. All right. And then Jake's got a lot of the information on on uh, on XX121 and the genetic accelerant that he shares, I assume. I'll just share everything and also make a copy all three for our personal files on all the information we get. Oh yeah. So yeah, you guys. Um, this this was obviously a lot of information, and there's still a lot more to find. But um, you are. Uh, You know, you. I think you probably all feel like you're starting to get a a a more clearer image of of things. Uh, there, you know, there's kind of a, a tapestry being woven here, uh, which is which is huge and goes back a long, long time. Uh, Rose has some information to share uh, that before she gets into what she talks about with the USS Cronola. Uh, she says, um, I, looking at the looking at the GBH colony files, it right before they all lost lost uh, power from what we think is some sort of EMP blast. Space traffic control was active and transmitted an image right before things went down. And she pulls that up on a, on a screen. This is the ship that broke the atmosphere. And based on what accounts we have from Mr. Decker before he died, we think this is the ship that bombed GBH-45. And there's some other information here, but just, just to talk about this, this ship has a distinctive sort of C shape. Survivors of the border bombings have reported a similarly shaped ship just before the EMP bursts and their own black goo bombings. Um, Rudy and, and the Dwayne... Black, the black goo is obviously the accelerant. Obviously the accelerant, she, okay. she agrees. Um, Rudy and Dwayne... You guys recognize this ship, also this shape of ship, also from David's memory. Um, he was on a ship such as this. Um, at one point, uh, just from what you what you glance through, at one point he was just a head being carted around 
by Dr. Shaw before she eventually repaired him, put him back on his body. But they stole a ship like this that they called a juggernaut vessel. And it was from this type of ship that he bombed the what he called the engineer population on Planet 4. Um, and so just, just cross-referencing that with what you would have learned. She brings up another one. Um, she brings up another image. And she says, the UPP colony on Alpha Kaseya 2, which our friends here, which began our friends here's involvement in all this, caught this image at long range. The ship seems to be identical. It burst through the high atmosphere cloud cover, and again, just before the colony was bombed, it hit an EMP. Um, there have been... Uh, She, uh, she says, and again, and where is it? There it is. This picture was taken over or Ariarchus colony on Kruger 60 by United America's, well, specifically a USCMC Cheyenne dropship just before an EMP was fired off and that colony went to hell. Uh, Verhoeven is kind of starting to nod a little bit impatiently and she says I, I have just one more to show and she produces one more picture she says I'm sorry this one's a little harder to see this looks like the same ship it's certainly the same class but it can't be the same ship as these others because this one was found crashed and apparently inoperable in the year 2121 by the crew of USCSS Nostromo, including one, and Rose kind of actively avoids looking over at Blake Jones, including one Ellen Ripley. But this image was taken over 50 years later, about five years ago, by a camera of a Wildcatters tractor, maybe three weeks before the colony's atmospheric prospect, uh, uh, processor went critical on LV-426. So this picture was only taken five years ago, but it matches up to a ship described over 50 years ago by a woman named Ellen Ripley. She, uh, Rose says, all these, all these vessels, um, they're, they're all identical. And uh, Khan kind of nods and she says, I, I, I've run an analysis. These ships are all absolutely identical in their, in their size and their design, but there's nothing to indicate if they're all the same ship. Obviously, that last one is an, is an older picture that predates these others. So... Um, but we have nothing to know whether we have one bad actor here or many. Um, so uh, Verhoeven, he asks, do we have any indication where these ships are coming from? Uh, to which Rose uh, says, um, we believe, based on everything we found, that these ships belong to a race that the android David called the engineers. At least, it seems Whalen yutani still calls them that. Uh, they seem, that name seems to have been coined by an archaeologist named Dr. Elizabeth Shaw. We found that in David's, uh, in David's uh, files that were on the hard drives. And at this point, she probably produces the pictures that you guys have already seen. Um, this, uh, this first picture, again, that, that you guys have already seen out of David's memory, but we'll pull it back up again. This first picture came directly from David's memory over 100 years ago on the Prometheus mission. Uh, 
Wayland Yutani believes the engineers are responsible for creating life on Earth, but in other places as well, the Arcturans are 99% human. And their entire culture there is is centered around a race they call the Star Teachers. Wayland Yutani believes the Star Teachers and the engineers to be the same people. So take that for what that is. So I know we have a lot more to go through, but this raises the biggest question of all, is that all this stuff is in Wayland Yutani's files. All of it. We got all this information from files. All the David files were stored on their drives, which means someone knew it. Okay? All of it. And yet as far as we can tell, Wayland Yutani, have they notified any governments? Have they told anybody of this threat? They're just letting all these different governments think that each other are attacking the other. Each is attacking the other. Right? Rose nods and says, that's that seems to be a very uh, straightforward assessment. On top of that, they are clearly using the different governments for uh, for different purposes to further their projects. So we have a threat of a magnitude and a ferocity that clearly to defeat will require humans of the different groups to band together, yet Wayland yutani is helping keep us apart for, for economic gain, but ultimately what do they gain if humans are wiped out? They lose too. They're morons. <laughs> Chasing the almighty dollar. Yeah, chasing it down a well until you drown. <laughs> it appears so. Khan, um, you know, Khan speaks up. Um, do we have any? Do we have any indication what the Yauch's involvement in all this is? Because this is a completely different alien species that we've known about for longer than we've known about XX121 or these engineers. Uh, and yet they seem to be involved as well. I think they're the well, yeah, really. we just We just saw them killing XX121s. Uh, yeah. I, I think, think we they saw, might be the galactic resistance. Yeah, I think we saw them quite the an engineer, was it? On the one planet? Yeah, um, the, uh, you know, uh, um, yeah, on GBH 45, in fact, uh, Rose pulls up that picture, uh, a picture taken from one of your suits of a female engineer. Uh, of the female engineer you saw in, down in the, in the, for lack of a better word, in the temple of GBH 45. And she says, um, looking in Wayland Yutani's files, that we, uh, Wayland Yutani established this facility over specifically, they, they, they established this facility on GBH 45 for a reason. They knew that this cave complex was there. They built their facility on top of it. And they have a word for this female engineer we, that is clearly of the same race, uh, which I'll return to that in just a moment, but um, they have a word that they say that they've pulled from the uh from deciphering engineer hieroglyphics around this 
temple complex. That's that's what they call it as a temple complex using David's data banks because uh, David apparently learned how to decipher parts of their language. It's a mix of it's a mix of writing and musical notes. But they called her the progenitor. Wayland Yutani believed that she is actually the one who created the first XX one two ones. Perhaps as long as a billion years ago. Let's hope she's dead by now. Well, um, <laughs> uh, Blake did set off uh, one of the Yaucha nuclear de uh, nuclear uh, <laughs> devices as you guys left, so I think it's safe to assume that everything there is gone. Um, well, we certainly can hope if they survive that, then we have bigger problems. But uh, here's that statue if anyone needs to be reminded of that. Of course, when you actually saw her, her skin was a lot paler, almost translucent white, like the other uh, pictures of the engineers you've seen. Um, and that's when Rose says, and that's why I kind of want to return um, to that for a moment. I, I believe David was mistaken because you see the female engineer. Whoa, no, no, no. Cancel, cancel. Sorry, I almost deleted the wrong thing. You see the female engineer, and then there's the engineer from David's memory that came out of cryo and you see the you see the the bold but also smooth features there I mean there's there's no hints of aging you know uh, what we would call crow's feet or wrinkles around the eyes around the mouth the the features are bold and large but at the same time they're smooth um, and then if we move on to the people that he bombed around what he calls Planet Four, there's some definite similarities here, but it just doesn't seem the same to me. I don't know if you guys get that same hint, but or get that same feeling comparing these. But and if the if it's true that the engineers did create us then it's possible that our dna is very similar to theirs 99 percent or more but i i can't help but wondering if we're looking at another created race on the left that are not the engineers they just I don't know any other way to explain it they don't look as perfect as the engineers look at their look at the way their heads are shaped. The engineers are perfectly round, whereas theirs aren't. Anyway, just an observation. I don't know if it means anything, but just a thought. Um, I think uh, Verhoeven is starting to, to, to look impatient. Um, And he asks about what we know about Cronola at this point. And um, Khan says, well, there's one more thing I want to talk about about these ships. And he, he sighs. Um, I, Rudy, when, when your ship, when, when um, Magellan was approaching... GBH 45 before you landed your your sensor logs show that you picked up a, a, a tachyon surge in low orbit of the planet yes well I think what you picked up was that juggernaut ship about to enter orbit because it that ship showed up shortly after you landed how how long was it an hour maybe two uh, just for you Marty I don't remember how long yeah. it was nah that's fine it's ballpark about right because you guys <laughs> you guys made planet fall and then you soared the facility so um well, I guess, hold on, I guess it was an hour or two after you landed, so probably eight hours or so uh, from when you actually started making Planetfall. Um, but Khan says, I, 
I'm just hypothesizing that maybe these ships use something called a tachyon shunt drive for their FTL. It would be substantially faster than our FTL drives. And it might manifest this way at the destination. It might manifest as a as a buildup of tachyon particles before the ship uh, comes through into normal space. The, the UPP, there's rumor that the UPP has had some success with tachyon drives, but only with small craft because it, it, re it, it requires an enormous amount of energy. Well, it occurs to me if you want to help save people's lives, you need to get the word out to the various civil authorities that if they detect a massive surge in tachyons or in atmosphere or uh you know just just above the atmosphere that they should immediately you know use whatever countermeasures they have because they're about to get attacked verhoven uh verhoven agrees he uh he he says that that makes a lot of sense and that's something that we should put out rose if you can get to work on that i uh, getting it to the proper channels, uh, especially throughout all the core systems in the frontier. There is something else. Uh, when we're done with this meeting, I would like to have some time to go over David's memories again, to try to learn uh, the language of the progenitors or engineers, whatever you want to call them. Since David knew it, there's a chance I might be able to learn it by going through his programs. Brilliant. Yes, and then the other is also David knew how to fly one of these juggernaut class ships. So that's something else that might be able to learn from watching him. Um, Khan, Khan gets a kind of a big smile on her face and she said, uh, she, she agrees with, uh, with Blake that that is absolutely brilliant. Uh, definitely something we can look into. Uh, Rose says, but first, we need to go ahead and talk about Cronola. Yeah, as far as I know, it's a vegetable oil produced from the <laughs> canola plant. It's an excellent substitute, especially if you have high cholesterol. <sighs> yes, that's not the Cronola we're asking, we're talking about. <laughs> Sorry. Um, USS no, Cronola, that's right. USS Cronola is... Um, a, is a Boygenville class assault ship, much smaller than the and Blake. You of course already know this. Much smaller than the uh, than the Conestoga class vessels, and not nearly as fast. Um, what's important about this? She says I've got two very important things that uh, in regards to this. I. Well, three, actually. It looks as if there are no other USCMC ships on course for ICSC colonies. So why Grendel specifically? Why are they coming here? The second big concern is that USS Cronola is registered with Lieutenant Colonel Price's 31st MAU which is based in Arcturus in the Crestus sector. Why would a ship from the 31st MAU, which is based all the way in Arcturus, be coming to Grendel? If they wanted to send a ship, there are plenty of other marine assault units that are closer. So there's that. What's the marine complement on a Bougainville class warship? Well, it's funny that you asked that question because I have the actual roster. And she, Ooh, she the roster. pulls it up on a screen for you. USCMC 31st MAU, Commission 2183. Command is Weems, George A.R. Captain, Crew 8, Marine Complement. Um... And you, obviously you've got last name, first name, sometimes middle initial, and then um, and then their their rank. So you've got you've got one officer, a lieutenant Justin Lance, that would be your platoon lead. You've got a 1.3 model Bishop Warren officer, probably direct aid to the lieutenant as well as staff sergeant, two uh, sergeants, and a number of lance corporals. 
Um, okay, so I guess outside out of game. Um, so this this has a platoon sized element. Correct. Of, of infantry that Correct. It can deploy. Correct. Okay, so that's nothing. I assume it must have nukes. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, give me one moment to pull up the armament of a uh, of a of a Boyganville for you. Uh, Boogenville, Boygenville? I haven't quite decided on that yet. Give me one second. It's, uh, Boogenville. Is it Boogenville? Right. Seems like it should be Boogenville. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, Colonial Marines Operation Book. Bob's probably already got it pulled up. He's way ahead of me. Uh, okay, uno momento. Let's see here. Bougainville class attack transport. Introduced at the start of the 2180s, it's a compact design intended to replace older Conestoga frigates. It resembles a smaller Conestoga, a smaller Conestoga with a distinct hammerhead bridge played across her bow, blah, 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 blah. Um, the Bougainville is a, is equipped with adjusted cost $265 million, a mother 7,000 system. Uh, it is equipped with short lance AC, AC, ASAT missiles, a heavy railgun turret, 10 tactical nukes, a medium railgun turret and a CWIS laser array, which is a, a, um, a countermeasure, as well as enhanced sensors and the ability to make planet fall as well. It also so does have a hangar not bay. Like strategic warheads. They're Correct. More for, I guess, uh, they're, they're more for like precision direct strikes. Action. Yeah. Right. What, what's the uh, what's the speed of the ship? It has an FTL rating of six, which means it is the same speed as your vessel. Uh, probably need to leave here soon. Um, well, here's what I'm thinking. Blake, what? real quick. Blake, do me a favor. Make a straight wits roll, and I'm going to give you a two bonus on that. Okay. Actually, One. no, just call it an observation. Just call it a full-blown observation roll. Yeah, go ahead, right. Rudy. Well, I was just looking at this from the point of view of strategy like they're not taking anything over with this ship i mean i don't know what kind of defenses grendel has but it's a whole planet so you're not gonna do anything with 40 dudes i mean the tac nukes are intimidating but i'm going to make an assumption and perhaps it's incorrect that they have some kind of defenses on grendel that they could handle taking out one ship especially if they have advanced notice of it coming maybe they don't maybe it's like low enough tech that they don't have anything but i'm trying to i well, if this is a, if this is kind of like a, uh, if this planet is is more kind of outside the normal government bodies, right? Yeah. Is ICSC or IC? ICSC. Yep. ICSC. Um, I would imagine that they they probably stop every now and then through here, right? I mean, it's uh, yeah, it, you know, um... just their presence doesn't mean hostility, right? Correct. But they're, um, they're, but they're at war. Declaration of war. <laughs> yeah. There's a warship here now, so there's. Wait, no wait, so wait. I, I guess I missed that part. Declaration of war against ICSC. Yeah. Well, it's actually, the other, the other way, way, around. way around. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. ICSC has declared war against the UA, and now okay. a UA warship is is showing up. All right. I'm but what I don't understand it. is, so you know, there's this warship coming here. That can't really. I mean, unless you know, you haven't corrected me yet, Marty, but. You know, I'm, I'm assuming that the planet has defenses. I'm assuming well, it has, you know. Uh, well, ICSC, um, the, uh, you know, one thing about the ICAC is the ICSC is they're more of a confederation than a than a full government body. So each planet's kind of each colony's kind of left to their own to defend for defense. Grendel's got a number of small Corvette class ships with limited weaponry. Um, could they engage uh, a Bougainville and take it out? Um, Quite probably, um, because the Bougainville is more, and uh, the Bougainville is more of an attack transport than a full-blown warship. And uh, give me one second here, um, Jim. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Can anyone else hear me? Anyone? Anyone? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, looking at that roster. 
uh, something strikes you. Okay. Justin Lance, Manuel Saber, Tristan Glaive. There's a lot of guys on this crew that have last names that are equivalent to a weapon or a tool. Oh, yeah, okay. Very good. I lost everything you said up until the war. No, you're supposed to be you're supposed to be quiet. <laughs> yeah, he didn't tell you that he was going to mute you guys, I don't think. Yeah, no, sorry. Um So the, I get that part right. The yeah. net effect is you remember a rumor about a um about a program that went around for genetic engineering called artificial that's fine we'll just turn it off um (laughs) uh, share it anyway yeah you're gonna share it anyway so let's let me now i can't undo it what's going on here let me try reconnecting can everybody hear me i I can hear you jake bob you there Bob? Yeah. Okay. I was sharing something privately with Blake and I shouldn't, uh, I I didn't tell you guys that. So you guys thought we lost everything. So, um, I, I, so uh, instead, uh, I, I, it was kind of dumb of me because realizing he's going to share it with everybody anyway. Um, so what, what I told Jim as Blake is looking at this roster, uh, and well, I'll I'll just let you convey the information, Blake. Jim, you there? I just see his iPhone is white, so not sure what he's doing or whether we lost him. Jim, can you hear me? I probably screwed something up. Jim, can you hear me? Reload time, I guess. Yeah. Oh, shit. All yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. What Everybody there? Yeah, I got a problem now. And I got I yeah, here. I hear me, Dwayne. Can you hear me? I heard. I heard Marty VP. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I have not heard Jim. Yeah, I, I got you. I can hear Bob. I Jim's talking. Can somebody Bob. let me know? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Jim's talking. Try Where reconnecting. Hit the old reconnect. Test, test, test. Reconnect again, Jim. I hear Marty. Jim's talking. I can't hear him. I can't hear Marty. Um. Okay. I we hear broke. Marty now. Yeah, we broke broke a good, so we're just waiting in room. But but Jim and Sharif don't hear each other. No, I can't ah, hear him. I'll try right, reconnecting we'll again. Again. <laughs> You're hot, you man. You me? Doesn't look like I'm broadcasting. Uh, maybe I am now. You are. Hello? Okay. All right, cool. Uh, Jim. I don't hear Jim at all. If he's talking, I'm showing Jim broadcasting, but I don't hear him either. Same. Roll twenty. It's my fault. I tried to, I tried to up the intrigue, and I screwed it all up. Testing, testing. I don't see me broadcasting anything. You are. I hear you. Do you hear me now? Yes. This reminds okay. me of a. Wait, uh, hold on, Sharif. Did you hear Jim? Negative. Try reconnecting again. Jesus. Uh, or should I just not reconnect? Hello. Um, hold on. Yeah. Dwayne, Rudy. I'm here. I got you, Dwayne. Test. Test. I got Rudy. I got Rudy. I got Jim. I got Dwayne. Okay. Bob. 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 What about Bob? Yeah, got him. Got him. Oh, We're good, finally. Crying out loud. Good movie, by the way. What about Bob? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't like it at first, but it grew on me. Yeah, time. it does, yeah. Dreyfus and uh, Bill Murray. Uh-huh. Sort of like a fungus. Kind of yeah. like Dude, Where's My Car? Oh, man. My guilty <laughs> pleasure. Yeah. Stupidest movie ever. But when you start yeah. when you start watching it, you just can't stop. It's like a train wreck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so... So, I rolled two successes, which gives me the... whatever you're gonna say now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, did you even catch what I what I told you all, and what I told you, or do you want me just to repeat it for I, everybody? I, I caught the part about the noticing that the uh, complement of Marines have last names that largely coincide with weapons. Yes. Um, which combined with every single one of those Marines does not have a middle initial. Uh -huh. So you've got Sophie sword at the broad bottom. You've got James gun with two ends. You've got, which that's interesting. That's a director, but okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you've got, I, uh, any, anybody that has a last name that coincides with a weapon or a, an improvised weapon like hammer doesn't have middle initials. Does uh, Ru uh, Rudy recognize that as some kind of naming convention for droids? Uh, no, but Blake recognizes it as a naming convention for a for a uh, whispered about project that the USCMC had with Wayland Utani for genetic breeding of Marines. No, for fuck's sake. Nice. Through the Iron Womb. They're called Iron Womb Soldiers. The Clone Wars have yeah. begun. <laughs> and oh, uh, that, that that program has been... Um, oh, um, wife, <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> um, that, that's hilarious. That's, bro. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so hard. <laughs> oh, um... Oh. um that 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 that, that that's okay. <laughs> that that is a practice wife. My new one's much better. There you go. That that program is uh, <laughs> has been long discontinued. It doesn't exist anymore. But um, they I they are known for extreme bouts of violence. Uh, they are known for being extremely good at being Marines and murdering everything in their path. And there's a good number of them on this ship. I don't, I don't see a Sergeant Storm on the roster. <laughs> no, there's not a Sergeant Storm. <laughs> so we should leave now. Let's just wait. Yeah, make like leaves and get out now. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I'm sorry, I'm still behind. I still don't understand how this one ship's going to threaten this whole planet. Well, even if it doesn't threaten the whole planet, it's it's going to threaten us individually <laughs> and me, yeah, the killer. So laser focus on us, I'm sure. But like, doesn't this planet have like rail guns stationed around for defense or missiles or some shit? They're completely like just yeah. We forgot to defend ourselves. Well, Verhoeven speaks up and uh, he says everything on an ICSC planet is for sale. And that includes Grendel. Everything's for sale on Grendel. Meaning it might include us. Or Rose, information that we're here. Rose, you already said that there are no other USCMC ships on course for any other ICSC colony. Is that correct? Rose just nods. He says they're coming here for an explicit reason. And in most of these happenings in the last six months there have been one there's been one common denominator and as he says that he looks at Jake and Rudy and Dwayne he's he says you the Magellan ran across a USCMC ship leaving GBH 45 while David was running around your vessel um it, yes, I said mean things to them. Do we do we remember? He says, "Do you know the name of that ship?" Do we, Marty? Um. Yeah, they told. I don't you. think it was this ship. It wasn't this one. I would remember that. No, um, it was USS Mayhan. I believe it was the USS Mayhan. And um, Verhoeven asked, "Do we know? Uh, do we know which MAU USS Mayhan belongs to?" Rose, Rose says, not offhand, but we can find out easily. Um, she asks if uh, 
she or somebody can use a terminal. Does someone want to make the Comtech roll, or do you want her to do it? You can push. She can't. So. Oh, good point. Well, Jake's got Jake's high on Comtech. Jake's got great Comtech dice. Jake will go. All right. Yeah, and and Bob, I'm hearing you about Discord. I'm trying to figure out because um, I think Discord's got a built-in screen sharing. <laughs> push that. <laughs> How do you get new successes with nine dice? All right, two successes. So yes. USS Mahan is under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Price, 31st MAU. And you have a bonus success. New and unexpected information. Um, it looks like USS Mahan is... Uh, while while it still continued on to GBH forty five uh, to find the colony a total loss, it would appear that oh shoot I closed my damn file folder. Give me one second. I'm sorry, guys. My my sincere apologies. I just have to reopen it. It would appear that USS Mahan uh, reported uh, back to command about a CM-94B science vessel that was leaving GBH-45 that refused to heave to uh, and was basically told or basically told uh, the commander of Mahan that they couldn't pull that ship over as it were. So in the end, Mahan decided to continue going, uh, but she did report back a CM-94B. You guys were under, um, you guys were under the other ship name at that point, if I remember correctly, which was, God, that seems so long ago, why can't I remember? <laughs> I, I feel you. Um... It was under, God, I got to go back through all these pages. That's right, because you guys were Dr. Dexter Holland and Dr. Brian May. STSV Meredith, that was it. I kept wanting to say Maggie, uh, but I knew that wasn't right. So she reported back, uh, the commander uh, of, of USS Mahan reported back to Lieutenant Colonel Price about a CM-94B uh, operating under the name Meredith, an STSV, a Wayland yutani vessel. Uh, and from her sensor logs, they determined that the course was from GBH-45 to Grendel. So, so from that, we're to take that they're searching for us precisely. Yeah, that's that's what I'm getting from it too. So then, our next question is: Do we have time to leave, or do we hide? Well, the ship is um, the the uh, Rose says. Well, the ship is five days away. Um, Verhoven speaks up and says uh, SSI is nothing if not mobile we can we can load your ship up with uh, with uh, much of what's here destroy the mainframes and get out how quickly do you think it would take us to get out of here Rose and she looks and she kind of glances over at Blake and says two days Uh, I can give you two and a half days to get out of here. And a Bougainville is the same 
has the same class engines as the CM94, so or as your as your explorer class, so they can't catch us. Even if we leave, they can't catch us. They're the same speed. Will they be able to follow? Yeah, are there any what kind of tracking systems do they have on that kind of ship? Uh, they have enhanced sensors, the same quality as what's on your vessel. Okay. Where do we go? Khan says, well, uh, with the with uh, all the available information, I did some, uh, I set the mainframe to some computing. Uh, Alpha Kaseya 2 also picked up the tachyon uh, buildup before they were bombed. And I have reverse, um, I've done the math, and it seems the ship that bombed GBH-45 here and Alpha Kaseya 2 here seem to, if I, and she, she draws lines, which, do I have a way to draw lines that you guys can see? I think I do. Don't I have a way to draw a line? Here we go. Let's see if this works. Uh, it didn't do anything. Hold on. There's got to be a way to do this. I know there's a way to do it. I've seen it done. I just don't remember how to do it. What if I do this? Oh, crap. Oh, look at that. It's just, it's not a straight line. Can I make a, can I do it as a polygon so that it becomes as a straight line? What if I click and do that? No, nothing happened. Shit on a shingle. All right, so guys, do me a favor. Just pretend this line is a straight line, huh? <laughs> pretend Marty's not drunk right now. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to draw a straight line with a mouse. It is hard to draw a straight line. You know what's also hard to do with a mouse? Sign your name. Oh, yeah. If I do the math on the courses where, those sh where that ship came from, they intersect right there at an unexplored system. We're going on a little trip. Verhoeven kind of looks around at all of you, unless any of you have a better idea. We can stay here and fight genetically engineered soldiers. That sounds terrible. Or we could go somewhere and fight genetically engineered aliens. <laughs> or we can go core words and fight genetic engineers. <laughs> um, regardless, they're fast enough to keep up with us and they have pretty good sensors. So it is possible. They can't catch us, but it is possible they could follow us unless we get out of here really fast. So where do we go? Uh, PP, what is it? Uh, Kami's calling it? The UPP. Uh, the UPP. I mean, we go where their enemies are, so they can't follow us? Or do we try to hide? No, I, 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 I thought we were going to go to where these two courses intersect. I thought that's where they came from. Oh. Well, yeah, yeah, the, the, so maybe I wasn't, maybe I wasn't entirely clear. Um, the, the, C-shaped ships that bombed GBH-45 and Alpha Kaseya, Kaseya when um, when uh, Khan determined their 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 course from the tachyon buildups, she basically just drew a uh, she just drew a line till the courses intersected, and that's where I they understand. the yeah, okay. they were talking about is the Juggernaut ships, the, not this uh, Marine vessel. Correct, that's correct, correct, approach. correct. Okay. I thought this was the you were talking about going into the mouth of the lion which at first i thought was crazy but then i was like actually that's a pretty awesome idea they'll never expect that show up on their at their base hey we're here Ver on the other hand if we go to point of origin of these c-shaped ships we're still going into the mouth of the lion 
Yeah, just a different lion. <laughs> There's a lot of lions in this game, metaphorically <laughs> speaking. Verhoeven says, uh, well, we have the best equipment. How many, uh, your ship has room for eight and there's uh there are six of you combined oh well five of you i guess in terms of the crew including the pilot you hired that leaves room for three more and he kind of nods at blake and uh and uh and he says that leaves room for two although technically rudy doesn't have to go into cryo that's true that's true but you could get uh... another one prefer if that was just an emergency based thing oh okay rose says i can scare up some emergency mobile cryo tubes um verho and and verhoven said that that's good and he does some quick math he goes so i i uh you guys have eight right so but, but what do we expect to accomplish and don't forget we were auditioning for a medic too because right now we don't have a doc Oh, that's right. We don't have a doctor. But what are we hoping to accomplish? Because um, obviously we don't want this. We don't want this marine, the ship of marines, to get us or our data or information. Um, I'm assuming that Rose and Verhoeven, you're going to share as much of this information with people who need to know and you're going to keep working on a uh, some kind of vaccine or something that will help people be immune to this stuff um rose says i'll get the information out uh well, and i don't know what the re repercussions are going to be for Waylon yutani once it hits the street what they've been up to but we will be heading into as we said, the jaws of the lion. What do we expect to accomplish there? We're just one ship with a handful of people. Um, Verhoeven. If we, run, if we run in, if we run into, if we run into three or four ships. If we run into a colony of, of, uh, you know, what are we going to be able to do? Verhoeven says, uh, you were one ship with Blake Jones, who is one of the best soldiers I've ever served with. I can provide a, we can provide a squad of SSI security personnel and all of the best equipment that we have. Uh, but SSI can't stay here regardless. Uh, uh, Dr. Khan, Rose and I will be coming along as well. Nice. Perfect. So we got, we got Hostages. With us. That's nice. But we... <laughs> but, <laughs> we um, Marines are trained for these kind of things. Ver, Verhoeven says, this is what SSI was established for, to protect mankind. This We have now an opportunity to go to the source of at least one of these bombers, assuming there's more than one. And just because just because we're going there doesn't mean that the bomber will be there. Of course, we don't have, know the answer, but it'll give us an opportunity to determine to learn a little bit about. Uh, it'll give us an opportunity to learn about where he's from and what resources he has available to him. Yeah, because it could just turn into recon. We could, if we run into a big planet full of bad guys with multiple ships we could just turn around and split but um okay so do we have on board our ship sufficient um computing capabilities and lab facilities for um rose and um jake Andy and uh, doc, the other doctor to continue working on this problem. Con Con's nodding. Uh, as a virologist, it yeah, I I believe an Explorer class ship has what we need, but it's going to take time. This won't be a quick endeavor. Well, I understand. It's just that if you're coming with us, you might as well be productive, doing your thing while we do our thing. 
All right. We are a science vessel. I'm after really all. excited about this plan. <laughs> I love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. All right. So we'll. Uh, uh, does anybody have anything else to discuss or add? I'm looking at the time. Yeah, I got I'm. I'm. I'm pretty much done. Well, I would like to uh, make sure to get to this uh, learning, learning how to fly juggernauts and learning the uh, engineer's language, because I'll forget by next next time we play, probably, that I was going to do that. Okay. Um, Using uh, David's memories, you know. Yeah. We're watching him fly, so I can be... Well, um, I'm going to write it down in my notes. Marty, you write it down. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I won't forget. I don't know how long that would take since you're an android and you could basically assimilate his memories. Maybe it doesn't take that long. Yeah, I might I might have to I might have to noodle on that a little bit. Or maybe Sounds fair to me. Maybe Think Rudy about it and it. let me know. Maybe Rudy does it while we're in cryo. Well, thinking about it like you know, it seems like learning to fly if you already know how to fly, which she does. Uh, learning to fly this new ship might be something she could do from the memories. The language seems like that might be a little harder, unless he like had like some kind of notes that he was making that she could use. You know what I mean? Like right. if he just like process used his processor to figure this out, I don't see yeah. how his memories would help. But if he kept notes and you know, because you're like watching a movie, right? When you're watching these memories, right? So, like, what he sees through his eyes. So, if he, like, deciphered stuff and did, like, a Rosetta Stone translation, then I guess she would have the information available. But if he just... Oh, so it's it's not like plug, it it's not like plugging in and downloading, like, in the Matrix. <laughs> of course, do you really want to download any part of David's... Right, she really does Information. That... <laughs> no. But, no, but why not? Just like his, I'm his sure that would work but... out fine. It's just an MP3 files. What could, yeah. what could go there, wrong? There's no, there's no David Trojan horse out there just waiting for the opportunity to take over another android. What are you talking yeah, he about? He seemed like such a charming fellow. I don't know. He was, he was certainly polite. He was very courteous as he was trying to kill us. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um. All right. Okay. So, um, guys, I, I, I hate to say this, but um, next time is not going to be next week. Um, because, uh, well, Tuesday night, the 25th, uh, me and my oldest two kids are going down to, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina for an Iron Maiden Within Temptation concert. Oh, that's nice, awesome. dude. Good for you. So, um, it's going to be a blast, but it, it's going to be very loud and I expect I'm going to be very hoarse. With the uh, echoes from the amplifiers ringing in my head, as Plus, uh, that's that's a decent drive home. I probably won't get back over. till three or four in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm going to be completely useless Wednesday, so um, I I think our next game is going to be Wednesday the second, two weeks from today. Two weeks, okay. Um, yeah, for me, Greensboro is only two hours. For you, it's got to be what four? It's about half? four, yeah. Assuming traffic is good, which I have a choice of hitting 85, and 85 is a nightmare. So I don't know that I'm going to do that, but I've figured that out. Um, and on the on the Conan front, um, I do have the next adventure of Conan written. Um, I'm not thinking we'll jump into that two weeks from now. I think we want to play this out Yeah. Um, before we do that. I'd like to play this out now that we spent the time getting back up to speed on everything. Yeah. Yep, yep. So And I'm happy with whatever you guys want to do. Yeah, so we'll 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 definitely play Alien next time and then um uh maybe uh maybe after we play this next alien scenario, um because I have a feeling this will probably be a, a couple game sessions to play through. We'll uh maybe after that if you guys want to we'll look at doing um uh, a Conan game or something. Cool. Perfect. All right. Awesome. All right. Cool, guys. We'll see you in two weeks. Thanks for playing. All right. Thank you. Enjoy, enjoy your show. All right. Thanks. <laughs>